us, Lord, you are welcome in this place. Father God, while you are here visiting, we ask you, Father God, to saturate us with your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we ask you to unstop our ears and enlighten our mind. Mm -hmm. Father God, whatever is in our hearts, Father God, we ask you to make it moldable, pliable, and malleable so that you will be able to use our heart for your precious yes. glory. We thank you, Lord, that this is a day that we've never seen before, and we mm -hmm. are just glad to be in it, and we thank you, Father God, for your visitation. We thank you, Father God, and we wait for the word of God on this morning. And y'all said, Amen. 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 So we've been talking about life principles and we've been talking about how to be better individuals and we're going to wrap up this five week teaching um, with the wrap up and we're going to go over everything that we've discussed and we're going to put it in some simplistic terms that should be able to help us continue our growth in Christ. Over the last five weeks we've talked about understanding and knowing certain truths prayerfully we've learned some new ones and we understanding have better understanding of some biblical principles that will help us be better people we should be clear now on our understanding of posture and position understanding that we have to be in a place for God to use us from a place but there's some things that happen from that we understand and we've learned about listening and, and hearing and, and being obedient and ready to receive after we've been placed in that position but the thing that we are going to talk about and concentrate on in this wrap-up is that now that we have positioned ourselves and understand our position, now that we have received marching orders and now that we understand that God is going to do something, it's time to get up and it's time to move. Mm -hmm. If you take the name of God, just God, G-O-D, two-thirds of God is go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So God is an action word. God is all about action. He's all about activity. He's all about action in our lives. G O D. G O. Go. I need you to go tell. I need you to go do. I need you to go say. I need you to go heal. I need you to go deliver. I need you to go. I need you to go. Mm -hmm. Now, if you refuse to go, and if you refuse to hear, and if you refuse to receive, one of the worst things that you could have been called in biblical days was a dog. Mm. What's God backwards? Mm -hmm. Dog. It was an insult mm -hmm. because it was uh, it was their curse word: serpent, scorpion, dog. Vile. They they use words like that. They didn't use the English vernacular that we use now. Mm -hmm. SOs and QRs and BR 549s and MLs and mm -hmm. ABCDEFs. Mm -hmm. They didn't use that because they understood something about the nature, the very nature of God. Well. They understood his his deity. And if we can get to an understanding of God's deity. We can begin to walk in his fullness. Amen. Amen. God's instructions for every individual is going to be different. Mm -hmm. It's going to be different because the anointing that it takes for one individual might not be the same anointing that it takes for another individual. Mm -hmm. The anointing might not be activated in an individual yet. So the instructions to go do might be a little different. God said to Ezekiel, and he said to many others, Go up, son of man. I am sending you to the Israelites. Mm -hmm. God is clear when he wants us to do something. He gives us a precise plan. He doesn't say, I need you to go stand over there in the corner and wait until I tell you what to do. He lets you know what you're going to do before you go. Mm -hmm. And if he's instructed you to wait, then there's no need in looking for an answer until the answer comes. Mm -hmm. Because God operates in specifics. I need for you to go build me an ark. And I need for it to be so many cubits and so many depths. And I need you to use pitch. And I need you to use it. He's specific. He gives precise details on how he wants us to do things for him. Well. God said to Ezekiel, go up, 
son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites. That's Ezekiel 2 and 3. Well, what was God saying? God was saying, Ezekiel, now that you have heard me, it is time for you to move. Here's the thing. A lot of people go to church, but they haven't heard God. Well, That's why they are still in the condition that they're in. They haven't changed their position. So their condition remains. They haven't heard God so they can not apply what God has said for them to do. Even though the, it has been in their hearing, they haven't received it. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right. There's an action component to the word God. We talked about it being go. Whenever God calls us to do something, he's equipped us to fulfill it. He said, don't give thoughts of. I don't need you worrying about what somebody else said. I don't need you worrying about food. I don't need you worrying about clothing. I just need for you to be obedient. God says to Ezekiel that I need for you to realize that I have given you everything that you need to accomplish your task. Well. God is saying to us, he's saying to you, I've given you everything you need to accomplish your task. Now what? All right. Now what? If God has already given you everything you need to accomplish your task, why isn't your task accomplished? Maybe, just maybe, you're still sitting. You haven't put any action to it. For every action, there's an equal reaction. And if you haven't reacted to the hearing, you're still in the same position that you were in before he spoke. Well, There's no way that God can get you to run a race while you're sitting down. Amen. He said, I need for you to go tell. Go tell him it's not getting on the telephone and calling and, and, and linking everybody in. Even though that's a media tool that we use. Obedience said go tell. He didn't say sit tell. Y'all caught that. All right. He didn't say sit, tell. He said go tell. <laughs> we like to sit, tell. Instead of go tell. Then he says, I need for you to speak up. And speak what I say. You know, we're obstinate. And we're hard-hearted. We're hard-headed at times. The word said so. So if the word said so, I can. We know the children of Israel, they were stubborn, hard-headed, obstinate, hard-hearted. Walking around, walking around, just walking, just walking. Well, where are we going? We're going down the street. How it going to take us 40 years to go down the street? <laughs> How it going to take 40 years to walk around the corner? Murmuring, complaining, arguing, infighting, finger pointing, backbiting, busy body. You know, you know. The children were hard-hearted and obstinate. The children of Israel. And God says that he was trying to send them forth into their promise. Mm -hmm. Y'all didn't get it? He was trying to send them forth mm -hmm. into their promise. Well, and They couldn't receive their promise because they were in the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Y'all didn't get that? <laughs> if they had really been in the way, mm -hmm. they would have received the promise. Well, but they were in, in the, the way, way and not in the oh, way. Okay. God says, whether you listen or whether you refuse to listen, you are a rebellious house. That's what he said to him. Your rebellion and your refusal to listen, hear, and obey causes you to remain in the position and condition that you in. But you, son of man, you real believers, you who have latched on I don't want y'all to be afraid by looking at your counterparts and your contemporaries. I need for y'all to be strong and stand firm and go forth and do. I've got a message for my people, and that message is going to come through you. I've said and said time and time again to you, my people, we are all ministers of reconciliation. There are only some people that you can reach. I don't care what mama, cousin, sister, grandma, auntie and them said. 
There are only some people that you can reach. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it is in every family, everybody got a favorite somebody. Mm -hmm. So everybody not equal. Well, Let's just dispel that rumor right now. Right, right. We didn't grow up with the mindset of everybody being equal because we understand that people got favorite, they got favorite dogs, <laughs> they got favorite shoes, they got favorite cars, they got favorite TV shows, they got favorite drinks, they got favorite smokes, they got favorite people. Mm -hmm. That's just how it is. Mm -hmm. So that means that everything ain't equal because if you go to a bar, for people that go to a bar, they got a thousand drinks. You got a thousand things to choose from, but you got a favorite one. So everything not equal. We like to think about equality as being, you know, uh, everybody got the same rights and everybody. Okay, so here's what we got the right to in Christ. We got the right to hear him mm -hmm. and obey him. Right. Those are the rights we got. Everything else is suspect. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I say everything else is suspect is because it's going through the vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's going through the person. So the information that is received is only going to be received at the level that the, 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 the person has. Mm -hmm. And if the person feels like that they're right, the word of God says, as a man, think of it as heart, so is he. So if he thinks he's right already, <laughs> I don't care who you are or what you say to him or uh her, -huh, they're right. They right even when they're wrong. Mm -hmm. All right. you, you, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when God says, I need for you to go and say this to an individual, he don't want you going and saying it out of your flesh. Mm -hmm. He wants you to go and apply his word with wisdom, mm -hmm. with power, with accuracy, seasoned with salt if need be. Because mm -hmm. potatoes ain't good raw. Have you ever had a raw potato? Mm -hmm. Okay then. Onions ain't good raw. Mm -hmm. But they're good for you raw. Yeah. Sometimes the word of God is good for you raw. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the only way that you can have it is raw because there's not seasoning that's going to make it any better for your taste. Yeah. So I might as well give it to you unwatered down, uncompromised. I might as well give it to you raw. Because if you're not going to receive it, you're not going to receive it anyway. There's no need for me getting whipped and chastised because I didn't serve it to you. God said, I don't need for you to be afraid of the words of men. Well, I've got a message for you, my people, and I need for you to go and communicate that message. I need for you to be obedient. It's not your message. I need you to remember that. That's where we get lost. That's where we get confused. It's not your message. It's the message that God is using you to tell. The message is coming through you. But we get that thing destroyed. Mm -hmm. Now it's my message. Now I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, here's how it goes. I'm in a position to tell you something in leadership. And you respect that position or you don't respect that position. We, we know how that goes. Mm -hmm. But according to society, I have some some notoriety and some position. So I'm telling you something. But the whole time I'm telling you, I'm texting on my telephone. Mm. Mm. Or I'm puffing on my cigar. Or I'm tip, tipping back my drink. So what people see is what they see. Yeah. What people receive from the people that they see is the reason that they don't receive a lot of things that are said to them because people can see. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a person that's walking around with a seeing eye dog and a cane, and you have determined that they are blind, they can see too. <laughs> <laughs> they can see what they see. All right. they, they listen, you don't have to be so super spiritual to see. No, no. Uh, if, if you listen, if I come to wherever you are, church, synagogue whatever you like to call it, and I see a woman in the pulpit preaching, I don't have a problem with that, unless it's not a woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
so 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 are you following me? Are you following me? Our job is to deliver the message. Well, that's our job. Our job is not to be afraid of the outcome of the message. Mm -hmm. Our job is not to realign and rewrite and rewrite the message. Our job is just to deliver the message. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Whether they receive it or not, if we put it out there in their hearing, they can no longer use as an excuse that they haven't ever heard that before. All right. <laughs> God's truth is not dependent upon our human responses. God's truth is his truth anyway. Whether we accept it or not. See, what we know is what we know. But what we don't know is what we don't know. And what we don't know is what we need to know so that we can know. Did I get that right? Because if we don't know it, we'll know it. Ain't, ain't no ain't no need in us trying to pretend like we do, but that's what we do. We'll not know something. <laughs> we'll pretend like we know it. We'll, we'll bob our head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen, amen. I'm like, wait a minute, man. Do they really not know? <laughs> so, so not knowing is it, it's okay not to know, but it's not okay to continue not to know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> God is saying that he's not going to judge us on what we know as bad as he's going to judge us on what we don't know. Mm -hmm. See, but we're going to be judged. The word of God says that we are to go through this life and to give our very best. Mm -hmm. And that we are to make ourselves available to the Holy Spirit to use us, to assist us and to guide us and to point us mm -hmm. into the direction that we need to go. If we get out of our way, if we get out of our way, right. we can go a whole lot further than we would normally go, but we, we're too busy. Mm -hmm. We're too busy helping God. We're too busy trying to assist God. We're too busy realigning things for God. We're too busy speaking on God's behalf when he ain't released us to speak. Mm -hmm. We're too busy trying to say God said something that God ain't said. Mm -hmm. We're just too busy in God's business mm -hmm. to advance. Now, when God says, I need for you to go tell my people, I need for you to go tell my people. Listen. Uh -huh. Okay, so listen. Here, here we go. Visitors don't come to church because of how church people make them feel. Okay? Right. So God said, tell my people that. So but when you tell people that, we start getting, a, well, there's a standard. There's, well, there's a standard for everybody. <laughs> there's a standard. Uh, you're supposed to give your best. Okay, well, yeah, you're supposed to give your best. Are you giving your best? <laughs> the standard don't stop with the people. That's right. The standard is for us all. That's right. So once we realize that the standard is for us all, what can we say to anybody else? That's right. That's right. <laughs> There's nothing that we can say to anybody else because the standard don't change just for me. That's right. I have to follow and be first partaker of the word as everybody else. So here's the difference. I have a little more studying and have put in a little more time. Does that make me better or no more? In some areas. In some areas. But guess what? We all got to come the same way. That's right. Well, I can't make no excuses for what I don't know. And there are some things that I don't know. But I tell you what, challenge me on the things I do know. <laughs> <laughs> see, see how far that gets me. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. God is saying that he needs for us to be faithful in the deliverance of this message. And Ezekiel was a good spokesperson for God. He was a mouthpiece. Are you a mouthpiece for God? Mm -hmm. Or is just your mouth a piece? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Have mercy. I'm just saying. Listen, our mouths are always doing something <laughs> to feed us or hurt us. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Let's look at this. How much time a day do you take your mouth to eat?
time of day are we spending with our mouth feeding it the word of God? Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Drinking and enriching ourselves on, 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 the, on the power of the word of God because we thirsty. Why is it every time we thirsty, naturally, we feed our natural body, but it's our spirit crying out for something? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we are natural beings, mm -hmm. and very rarely walk in the spiritual. We have aspects of our life that tap into the spiritual from time to time, but we are natural beings with a spirit in us that's trying to guide us to learn how to walk in the spirit, but we in the way. Mm -hmm. We in the way. So the Lord says, in your mind, I'm hungry. And your stomach is confirming that. Your stomach is saying, that you almost can hear it say something. <laughs> Y'all know how it goes. You've been sitting somewhere crowded, people running your stomach showing up. Hey, you ain't all day. That your stomach do that. But what if that's your spirit crying out? That's right. I'm making I'm making fun because when you're hungry, you're hungry. Mm -hmm. But what about when you're hungry? What about when your spirit is hungry? How do you know when your spirit is hungry? Amen. Amen. Yeah. As a watchman, we stand at the gates and we scream and we cry loud and we spare not. The enemy's coming. The enemy's coming. We were in school and we learned another one of the lies that they told when we talked about Paul Revere, which is only one of many lies that they taught when he was in school. Mm -hmm. The British are coming. The British are coming. There was always a watchman that was out to inform the people that something was about to happen. Across the land and country and pulpits all over the land today, there are some pastors that are not crying out. The enemy's coming. The enemy's coming. I'm going to not be one of them. I'm telling you. The enemy's coming. The enemy's coming. But hey, why are you running afraid? You know he's coming. Are you prepared to engage him when he comes? Well, the Spirit of God is trying to prepare us with the spiritual watchmen of the Holy Spirit and spiritual pastors that the enemy is coming. There's judgment coming. There are consequences coming for our actions. But we're too busy. We're too busy to hear it and receive it. The fundamental connection between the watchman of your soul and the spokesperson speaking is, will you receive the information that you hear or will you disregard it? Mm -hmm. How many times has the Spirit of the Lord moved upon you to say, I need for you to say something, and you refuse to open your mouth. Mm -hmm. All right. You say, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to hurt their feelings. Well, are you worried about their feelings or their soul? Mm -hmm. if, you're, if, if I hurt your feelings, I, I'm going to apologize now for hurting your feelings. But I'm going to apologize like this. I'm sorry that you feel like that I hurt your feelings. But I don't apologize for what the word of God say. Mm -hmm. I apologize for you not having a proper understanding of what I said. But I don't apologize for, for what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. So if, if you are so superficial and so fragile that every time a pastor says something that you disagree with, that's not my fault. Mm -hmm. That's not my fault. All right. If you don't spend enough time with the Lord, and if you don't study enough with the Lord, and if you don't have a relationship with the Lord where he can chastise you, what type of relationship do you have with him? That's right. Nobody can correct you. Wait a minute now. You pray to God, and you want him to do something, and he wants to correct you, you can't receive correction. Okay. All right. I got you. Open your mouth and let the words come out. When you are in certain positions, and when the Lord has sanctioned you and released you to go and go and tell my people and go and go and report and go and say, we just need to start learning how to be obedient, getting up and go. Listen to this. Open your mouth and eat what I am giving you. Mm -hmm. So this is not baby bird syndrome no more. Okay, so now we're going to have a little fun right now. Okay, so now mama 
and mamas all over the land have to feed the babies. Because the babies can't feed themselves. That's right. They got the same arms, same mouth, same lips and all that, but they don't have the same understanding or coordination to feed themselves. Mm -hmm. Do they? They don't. Mm -hmm. That's why mamas are important. Mm -hmm. Now, as baby starts to grow, mama's role becomes less and less when it comes to feeding them naturally. Mm -hmm. She got to start learning how to feed them spiritually now because now they can feed itself. See now we get in danger for, when we got the fork and spoon. <laughs> when, when mama got the fork and spoon, mama can tell just about when you done because you start <laughs> speaking and blowing and smacking and doing all that stuff. But when you got it, you're eating till it start coming at your nose. Lord, 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 this is so good. This is so good. Well what you say? Well what I'm saying is is that when we feed ourselves, whatever it is that we feed ourselves, sometimes it's not a proper diet. Well, because we feed ourselves. But when the word of God is coming forth, it's coming forth, the Lord says, open up your mouth and eat this. Well, Here's something for you to eat. I'm trying to feed your spirit. Mm -hmm. Take your spiritual fork and eat this. You sitting back, Lord, I got the chicken on at the house. I got the crock pot, the beans in the crock pot. I sure hope I didn't get Did I leave them on Lord? I sure hope that I didn't leave them beans on the I don't want to get home and them beans be done burnt up. As much time I put in the beans. I got the roast. I put them on low. Did I put that roast? So the whole sermon, you having a conversation with yourself about the roast well. and the beans. And you have not yet been able to eat what the Lord has prepared at his table for you. Well. What do you find interesting about what God is saying to you? God is strong, so everything that God touches, he makes it strong. Mm -hmm. If an area of your life is weak and you add God to it, that is nothing stronger than God. Concrete ain't stronger than God. Still mm -hmm. not stronger than God. But, but you add God to the equation, God strengthens that equation that situation or that circumstance just because he is. And God is about action. God, G-O, go, then there's a D. Now, you want to really get super spiritual? Okay. God, G-O, God, go, G God, G-O-D, D-O, do, go do. Not one. 
So, so why, why are they being worshipped? I, I, I'm just trying to help you understand we got to put God back in his place. Mm -hmm. And we got to move and go do it the way that God says go do it so that we can receive the benefits and the blessings. Well. When we digest the word of God in wisdom, it sweetens our life. Mm -hmm. This means that we're not looking in the bakery window slobbering and salivating for the cupcakes. <laughs> We're not standing there at, at, at Krispy Kreme looking at the hot nap sign that the donuts going <laughs> around, the, around the carousel and we looking there and they, and they say, uh, get him a beer and he drew me. <laughs> you're sitting there, you can't wait and you, and you bite into that you bite into that Krispy Kreme donut and that sugar and that all that warm stuff run down there. Your, 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 your tongue, your tongue go down there and wrap it back up in there. <laughs> That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about desiring to have something that you can't have. You can have this word. You can have this word and it don't cost you nothing. They ain't giving away Krispy Kreme donuts for free. Y'all ain't getting it. I'm going to help you. There's a cost to everything you want. Everything that you want does a cost it. I mean, you're going to pay one way or the other. But there's payment that's going to exchange hands for something that you desire. The Lord paid it all for us on the cross. Amen. If we desire that we want to go and get a Birkin bag, or if we desire that we want to go and get a, a Dolce and Gabbana bag, or a, a, a bag of dentures, Whatever kind of Michael Kors, or, if we want to go get a bag, you're going to pay for it. Well, yeah. If I want to go get me some Stacey Adams, I'm going to pay for it. Because there's a price associated with everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why do we think that we're not going to pay the, the cost? Come on, that's right. We got to count up those costs. Right. We want to be productive in our lives. And, uh, if that's the case, then our, our life has to be balanced. We need to understand that we need to have a balance in our spiritual and our natural. There's a saying that I like. And, uh, you can be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Mm. I like that. Now, I do like the heavenly minded part, but I don't like being no earthly good. I'm reminded that the word of God says, we can think more highly of ourselves than we ought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can walk with our head up like this. Thinking that we got this all going on. <laughs> we are the essence of perfected perfection. And we walk it. We can't see where we're going because we're walking with our head <laughs> so high. Now, something natural happens in our stomach. Uh -huh. Because we've been eating so much. And it don't agree with our system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's only two ways it can come out. This way or that way. <laughs> but it's got to come out. All right. Listen. Sheep eat. Sheep are constantly grazing in the pasture. Mm -hmm. They're constantly eating. Mm -hmm. But what goes in a sheep got to come out mm -hmm. that sheep. The word of God goes into us as food and nourishment. Mm -hmm. And it replaces that foolishness, mm -hmm. that hatred, mm -hmm. that anger. That frustration, that hurt, that pain, all of it got to come out. So there's no need in us thinking that it ain't going to come out. And sometimes when it come out, it stinks. I ain't never been around no trash heap that didn't stink. I ain't never seen a garbage man that didn't say that his job stunk. Death stinks. Sin stinks. Mm -hmm. The word of God says it's not a sweet smelling savor in his nostrils. Mm -hmm. It stinks. Sin stinks. But if the word of God 
God is going in us and it's being effective. Mm -hmm. There's some stuff in us that's going to come out and it's going to stay. Mm -hmm. God spoke to Moses. This is what God said to Moses. He said, I want you to go and I want you to tell the Pharaoh to do certain things. Just go. What, what Moses did? They 
thoughts was on the wine and the celebration. Not that Jesus had the power to turn water into it. <laughs> God Almighty. We get so caught up on our situation or our say circumstance, it, it. we forget that Jesus has the power to fix it. We're so focused on the problem, but Jesus is the solution. The power that we have is right here, but we won't speak it. We're too busy worrying, murmuring, and complaining instead of saying, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank, I thank you for the adversity. Lord, I thank you. Lord, whatever it is that you're trying to get me to learn from this, Lord, teach me, Lord, show me. Lord, bless me in the midst. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because when praises yes. go up, yes. blessings, come, blessings down. come down. Amen. God spoke over the multitudes and spoke over the loaves and the fishes, and they were all fed. Mm -hmm. What makes us think that God can still Speak to the multitude and there be an overflow of food left over and enough for everybody. Mm -hmm. I used to look at this Clairol commercial that I love. Mm -hmm. And so on. Mm -hmm. And so on. And so on. It has a picture. And one thing happens. And then it goes and so on. And so on. And so on. So you become the and so on every time you hear a word and you go out and share it with somebody else. That's a and so on. Then they share it with somebody else, and that becomes a, and so on. Then they share it with somebody else, and that becomes a, and so on. Next thing you know, we got a whole bunch of people that know the word. But then, let me tell you what the danger with that is. The danger with that is, is when people start adding stuff to the word. <laughs> we all played that game. I need three, four people standing right here, and I'm going to tell you something in your ear. And I want you to write down, uh, I'm going to write it down on a piece of paper, I'm going to give it to the last person. But I'm going to stand here, and I'm going to tell you, what I'm gonna say. By the time they get down there, it's, it's a totally it. different message. <laughs> That's why you have to be careful, church. Amen. That's why you have to have a relationship with God yourself. Mm -hmm. God spoke and healed the lepers, and He spoke and Lazarus rose from the dead, and He turned water into wine, and He spoke and the blind could see. And he spoke and the deaf could hear and he spoke and the, the, the cripples and the lame could walk and the paralyzed were healed. That's the power of God's word. Wait a minute. God put a portion of that word in us. You mean to tell me I can speak healing? I can speak life? I can open deaf ears? Uh, you can't. <laughs> I, I can't but the word of God flowing through me can All right. it's all about the word of God listen in school we were dissecting frogs <laughs> now you got people that were complaining then about the frogs being dissected that they had to kill the frog so that people could learn I don't know what you learned about dissecting a frog in science that's going to help you in the real world unless you're cutting off the frog legs and frying. I don't know. <laughs> but, but here's what I'm saying. So you spend all of that time learning what you learned in school to find out that it ain't going to benefit you now, right? <laughs> or that it was a half of a truth, right? So watch this. Little boy who grew up in a, in a savings home Daddy was a pastor, mama was the first lady, understood about bringing things back to life. <laughs> Little boy had the gift. He went into the classroom and the teacher said, well, we're going to be dissecting frogs today. Little boy went over and he was like, I, I, don't, I don't know about this. He laid his hand on his frog, frog jumped. <laughs> <laughs> teacher was like, oh my God, oh my God, the frog is supposed to be dead. The frog, frog pinned down, <laughs> laid open, flailed out. Little boy walked past another one of the frogs, it jumped. He walked down the road, frogs started jumping. Why did the frogs start jumping? Say again? He said he had the gift. He had the gift. He understood the power that was reigning through him. And he ain't opened his mouth and said a word. Sometimes you don't have to say nothing to say something. Sometimes. You need not to say something and you say something. Sometimes you can say something and it be premature. My wife and I were 
like having a conversation and I'm laughing and I'm like, you know, I don't cook with a lot of salt now because you can tell when you cook with a lot of salt how salty stuff is and you taste some other stuff and it's real salty. Some people are so accustomed to salt, they don't know when food is too salty. Yeah. <laughs> because they have grown accustomed to the taste. That's how sin operates in our life. We have grown accustomed to sin being in our life. It don't even, it don't even move us no more. We're not even phased by it. Life and death in the power of the tongue and these biblical principles I'm going to share with you are going to conclude everything that we've learned and we've been talking about the last five weeks. We access the power of God by speaking his word. That's how we access it. If there's something in your life that you want, find the scripture in context mm -hmm. and come in agreement with it. Watch that situation changed. Mm -hmm. Now, how you know it's going to change? Because you're going to write it down. Mm -hmm. And you're going to make it plain. The day they read it can run with it. Mm -hmm. You can tell your daughter, your granddaughter, your cousin, this, I know these words. How you know? Because on uh, the 30th of uh, August, I said to the Lord X, Y, Z, and on the 31st, this would happen. Mm -hmm. you, you, you feel where I'm going? Mm -hmm. Access to the power of God comes by speaking his word. The total power of God is in his word. I didn't say some power. I said the total power of God is in his word. All right. Your situation looks so bleak. You contemplating serious time. And I won't say suicide. You contemplate something serious on this side of living. And you want to go to the next side of living. Thinking that that's going to solve your problem. Why did they do that at? <laughs> How is killing yourself going to help yourself? But because the mind and the emotions are so tangled up and confused. They see no other way out. They'll take their own life and leave the burden on somebody else. How mm -hmm. selfish. I understand and know that suicide is serious, but so is the word of God. Right. The word of God is serious. And if we apply the word of God in time, Come on now. in time, maybe we can save some people from some situations and some choices that they would make that they wouldn't ordinarily make because we are not afraid to go do what God said. Mm -hmm. To go and say what God said, go and say. I don't have a heaven or hell to put nobody in. And I'm not condemning anybody to heaven or hell. Listen, I don't care if you come and you got on sneakers. I don't care if now, now listen, if you gotta hold the top on <laughs> That's a different story. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to go about that a different way. That, but, but I'm gonna send somebody. That I'm, can you say something about the hard to top? <laughs> Just say something about it. But still, I want you to come. I'm not gonna deny you access because you come and listen. Just come. P please come. Come as you are. We, we came as we were. He went into the crack house and got some. He went into the whole house and got others. He went down to the jail and got some. People think that once you go to jail, your life is finished. My God, Paul spent just as much time in jail as he did preaching. And we're worrying about jail. We're worrying about where our individual is being and not where he's going. That's right. We got criminals in the White House. Whoa. We got crooks in the White House. And we're worried about where somebody been. We so good. Here we go. Uh-oh. <laughs> yes, but I filed bankruptcy for a reason. <laughs> Eight times. <laughs> Eight times. I, yes, I disrespect for a reason. I'm trying to make America greater again. <laughs> greater than what? <laughs> greater than what? <laughs> Show me the greatness. Look in your mirror and show me how you making America great again 
right now. <laughs> and people following like the Pied Piper. <laughs> what are you doing? We're making America great. Okay. All right. So that's what we're doing now. This is where they do that at. Mm -hmm. We got to speak the word of God with power and authority and not worry about what's going to happen. Well, Listen. A message like this will get you locked up in some countries. It, if you go too far, it'll get you a phone call now. They'll come knock on you door. Did you say something about uh, making America great? I don't know what you're talking about. That was the spirit <laughs> of the Lord speaking. I can't remember. I get selective amnesia in a minute. <laughs> y'all y'all know what selective amnesia is. Huh? <laughs> you forget what you want to forget and you remember what you want to remember. <laughs> We see that happening right now, don't we? Yeah. I don't remember saying that. Did I say that? Did, did I say maybe if we take some Clorox and inject it in somebody? Did I say that? Oh, We're going to inject it. I mean, you know, maybe we can. Did I say that? I don't remember saying that. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm closing now, church. The word of God and the preaching of the cross is foolishness to some people who are perishing. Mm -hmm. There are people who are dying. Because they don't have the word of God. Because they have determined that the word of God is foolishness. But to us who are saved, we understand that the power of God is in his word. It's 1 Corinthians 1 and 18. We understand the power of God's word. We understand the authority that we have. But we got to learn how to get comfortable walking in it. The word of God seems foolish to many people. They forget that the word of God has the very power to fix your situation. I don't care what your situation. Okay, listen. Let's, let's do something. Try God. Try God. Your situation broken, right? You don't see no way out of your situation, right? Okay, try God. How I try God? I don't know how you going to try God. That's for you to figure out. But try God. You tried everything else. You done tried the scratch offs. That didn't work. <laughs> you done tried picking folks. That didn't work. You done tried the cash five. That didn't work. You done tried the crack pipe. That didn't work. You done tried the Percocet. That didn't work. You done tried everything to fix the problem. It didn't work. Didn't work. Try God. Man. I'm challenging you to try God. I'm talking about sincerely. I didn't say use God. I didn't say come to God like he a genie and you're going to rub a magic lamp and you're going to get three wishes. I said try God. Put God to the situation. I will see people like to put God to the test. Mm -hmm. Not 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 good to try to test God, Amen. church. Right. You need to put God on the situation, but don't try to test God. Mm -hmm. You might float that test. Mm -hmm. You might not have studied enough to pass that test. Mm -hmm. well. You see what I'm saying? We we talk about in life they're gonna be tests. Just don't try to test the teacher. That's all I'm saying. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power of love and of a sound mind. How do I know that your mind is sound? <laughs> By the sound <laughs> of, your mind. of your mind. By the sound of the stuff that comes out your mouth. Because what comes out your mouth, not always sound. That's right. So that must mean that your mind. Not sound. <laughs> but there's sounds going on in your mind. <laughs> I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. We have to understand, church, that we play a role in propagating the gospel and filling the earth with the gospel through us who are the mouthpieces and spokespeople for God. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you take God back to your family? You come church and you take back and you say two things. The two things that you say could change something in somebody's life forever. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have to be willing to count up the cost. 
the word of God says this. And we use this all the time. And I want y'all to hear this and get this. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundant above all that we can ask or think. According to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church. To him be glory, honor, for all generations, forever and ever and ever and ever. Then we say, amen. But we forget. Now to him who is able mm -hmm. to do. Wait a minute. God is go do. Mm -hmm. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, that's one, mm -hmm. abundantly, but well, wait a minute now, he's going to exceed your expectations mm -hmm. for what he can do. Well. Above all that you can ask or think. Mm -hmm. That blows my mind. That exceedingly blows my mind. Mm -hmm. God knows what we need before mm -hmm. we ask and he knows how to give it to us, us exceedingly and abundantly above all that I'm even asking for. Or what I think. But we ain't asking for nothing. And we ain't thinking nothing. Because our minds are jaded. Because some man got your mind. Some woman got your mind. Some drug got your mind. Some TV show got your, You can tell me everything going on on the Game of Thrones and power. And can't tell me nothing about the songs. <laughs> you tell me everything is going on on your TV show or your soap opera, and you can't tell me what. What do you? Uh, I see. I need to find the first book of Macadamia. Where is that at? It's right after Revelations. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Ain't even the book in the Bible. But you don't know the difference because <laughs> you don't pick it up. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> Turn with me right now to the first book of Macadamia, chapter 4, <laughs> Macadamia 1 and 3. <laughs> and you look at, I, I, if you got to say amen, everybody say amen. <laughs> amen. Yeah. Everybody say amen. Remember, don't want to look like that you don't know. <laughs> now to him, he was able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Church, that power still works in us. The word of God says, and this is what I want to share with you. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. I am not ashamed, Romans 1, 1, 6 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed. Don't be ashamed to say God's name. Don't be ashamed to invoke God into a situation. Don't be ashamed to let somebody know, I'm going to tell God on you. <laughs> All right. Listen, hold up, hold up, hold up. When you tell a person that you're going to tell God on them and it strikes fear in their heart, you've accomplished something. When you tell some of these fools that you're going to tell God on them, they say, God, who? <laughs> what God do you tell them? You see what I'm saying? Because they don't have an understanding. Mm -hmm. The enemy wants us numb and dumb. Unable to speak because we're paralyzed with fear. Mm -hmm. He wants us to remain paranoid and pretending. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want us studying and remembering. He wants us to be confronted by his minions, his imps, and his demons. Because we won't apply the word of God in our life. You cannot speak God's word over your situation. Unless you know God's word. God has given us the answer. He's given us the key. To unlock. Blessings for all of our situations. It's going to be found in our Bible. Here's the truth for you. That I need for you to get. And walk away from here with. The word of truth is the Bible. God has. Entrusted us with this instruction manual. The reason that he has entrusted us is because he wants us to study to show ourselves approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 
Not just dividing. Dividing means rightly understanding, rightly getting the concepts, rightly applying it. Not just haphazardly, willy-nilly, lazily, everything that we need to know in life, we can know in the Bible. The spirit of truth is found in the Bible for those who are willing to accept that truth. The truth of the matter is, is that the word of God reveals the spirit of God. John 16 and 13 says, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you in all truth. If you're not being guided in all truth, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe the spirit ain't came yet. Maybe you need to wait a little longer before you make that decision or make that move. Because the word says when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Just like he guides me into all truth. One of the main functions of the Holy Spirit is to guide us and to lead us into all truth as it's found in the Bible. Once we have prepared our position, once we have listened to God's instruction, once we have gotten up on our feet and we go out and we speak and we move in obedience, then and only then will we reap the benefits of God's blessing. Becoming men and women of God allows us the opportunity to show forth that the Holy Spirit has illuminated our minds. That the Holy Spirit is always pointing us back to Jesus. John 14 and 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That ain't Pastor Joe. That ain't Bishop Sikamongo. That ain't Apostle Shane Hawaiian. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I don't have to go and sit down in no box and offer no confession to nobody that can forgive me of my sins and tell me go and sin no more. Nobody can do that but Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus doesn't just share this truth with anyone. He shares this truth with everyone. But if you are a anyone, anyone cannot listen. <laughs> Everyone that listens to the words of the sound of God voice will be healed. Everyone that receives him will will. Everyone, 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 everyone that everyone that promises, promises, promises. Mm -hmm. To know him is to know him and to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. 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 I hope this series has helped you as much as it has helped me to understand about our positioning and understanding what we are to do once we have purpose in our hearts that God is going to be the one that we say that we follow. I want to seal this word and seal this teaching. This teaching will be online, ready online um, Monday. If you go into the sermons, it will be there in its entirety. Um, all of the sermons will be updated online. The links to all of the sermons will be on the webpage as well. We want to seal this right now. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity for these last five weeks to study this series. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father God, that those things that we are continuing to learn of you and to continue to allow you the opportunity, Father God, to mold us and make us into the men and women that you would have us to be. We thank you in advance, Father God, for those promises that you have promised us and those things that you have done on our behalf. We count it all joy, Father God. We thank you, Lord, and we ask you, Father God, right now to bless our families, Father God. Bless our minds. Bless our hearts, Father God. Send healing. Fix finances. Fix relationships, Father God. Whatever it is that the people have before you in their prayers and petitions, Father God, we bring them to you right now. We lift them up to you. We lift up the people in the kingdom. And, Father God, we lift up the people in their families who don't know that you and the pardon and the forgiveness of their sins. We ask you, Father God, to send forth your laborers and to go out into the hedges and highways and compel men to come. We thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for this church. We thank you, Father God, for this platform. We thank you, Father God, that we are able to meet here on Sunday mornings to hear your word. 
Father God, we don't take anything for granted. Bless us and we'll be blessed. Forgive us and we'll be forgiven. This is our prayer this day, Father God, and forever and always. And the church said, Amen. 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 Amen.